Hi everyone, this is Paul from Ad Espresso here and thanks for joining us for our latest webinar. Today we're going to be going through everything to do with Facebook targeting. We're going to call it our blueprint, just give you some strategies to get the most out of your Facebook ads. Uh, so just before we dive into everything there, and most commonly asked question that we always get is, are we recording? Yes, we are recording. If you've registered for this webinar, you will get a, a recording sent to you automatically from GoToWebinar about an hour after it finishes there. So look out for that in your inbox. I know sometimes they go to spam boxes, so go and check that as well there. Um, this is going to be quite an interactive session there, and we're going to answer as many questions as possible. So you'll see in your GoToWebinar panel, there's a question section there. Please go and, and feel free to uh, ask any questions there. My colleague Tori is also helping out with this webinar and we'll be monitoring any questions that come in. Also, if you just want to put in the chat box now where you're joining us from, um, that'd be really great. And just check that you can see our screen properly and hear our audio okay. Um, that'd be really appreciated there. Um, so just a little bit about myself, I won't dwell on this too long, but my name's Paul, I'm the Head of Education at Ad Espresso. A little bit of background here is we're not just going to give you theory in this webinar, we're going to give you practical advice. So I've audited over a thousand Facebook accounts, I handle about one to two million of uh, ad spend for clients each year. I've coached companies um, of all sizes, I like doing small business, but I have done some with up to 10 billion turnover. A Facebook Blueprint certified and I do all the training at uh, Ad Espresso. Great questions after this, just drop me an email, paul at adespresso.com or just drop us a Twitter there. Just seeing who we've got here, we've got people from, we've got Paul from Long Island, Scott from Los Angeles, Jay from Austin, uh, Alex from Ireland, another Jimmy from New York here, Atlanta, oh my God, we've got so many people here. We've actually got a record number of people on this webinar. You can see San Diego, Chicago, Slovakia, Canada. Loads and loads of people here. So thanks for joining us all. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time today. So why are we here? Um, this is Massimo, who's the uh, CEO and founder of Ad Espresso. And I've got this great quote from Max. Um, he says that every day, hundreds of thousands of dollars are wasted displaying a great ad, but to the wrong audience. So that shows you that targeting is really important. Here's a little stat for you. On Facebook now, we've got over one and a half billion daily active users. And the number of monthly active users is over 2.3 uh, billion. And Instagram don't release their, their precise stats, but well over a billion using that. So obviously we don't want to be targeting everybody there. We want to find you know, that needle in the haystack, just the right people to be targeting there. Another consideration for why uh, targeting is so important is if we look at the structure of an ad campaign, we've basically got three things that we can control with our advertising. We've got our objective, like are we going for conversions? Are we going for uh, video views? Are we going for uh, engagement there? Um, second bit that we've got there is the ad set where we control our audience, which is what we're, we're focusing on today. And then you've got the ad creative itself, like are you using an Instagram story, are you using an image, are you using a video, all that sorts of things. So our three things they can control, one of those is targeting, which is why we're going to have a heavy focus on it today. So let's look at what we're going to be covering today. Um, we're going to be doing some audience research first, how to find the best audience. And we'll be going into using interest and demographic graphics, then lookalike audiences. And then we've got a thousand dollar experiment on interests versus lookalikes. Um, and we are gonna have an exclusive first look at the results of that experiment um, towards the middle of the webinar. Then we're gonna have a dive into custom audiences and then just a couple of slides at the end for fun on the future of Facebook targeting there. Now to help you here, we're gonna make this a more of an interactive session here. I don't just want you to get the theory from me, I want you to actually apply it yourselves. So there's a couple of handouts that are gonna help with this. So if you're watching the live webinar, go onto your GoToWebinar panel and you'll see a handout section there. And you should be able to download two handouts. One is our Facebook Ads by Persona workbook, and the other is our Facebook Custom Audiences ebook. This Custom Audience ebook, we released it earlier in the week. It's, it's hot off the presses. It's really fresh, updated with all the latest information. Now, if you want to replay, probably just pause the video for a second, and you've got the URLs here where you can download those books there. So you should be able to get hold of those. If you get any problems downloading those, again, just email me, paul.adespresso.com, or tweet at adespresso, and we'll be happy to help there. 
So section one here, we're looking at research and planning, and we're going to be going through six different tips that I've got there, um, you know, different tools there in your toolbox to go and help with this. So why are we looking at our customers here? Um, I think sometimes it's very, like as Facebook advertisers, we get very hurried away with thinking about the technical side of things. So we think about pixels, we think about algorithms, we think about the, the learning phase and all that kind of stuff. And we forget that the, sometimes the ads don't work because we're dealing with real live human beings there. You know, we're not showing this ads to uh, machines at the end of the day, we say it's show it to humans. So we really need to get into that mindset there. Um, and we call this either a buyer persona or customer avatar. They're the same thing, different people call them different things. So that's what we're gonna have a dive into now. So we're just gonna exit for a moment from um, our slides and we'll be going to, into this uh, buyer persona workbook, which is why I asked you to download it here. So this is a very simple exercise to create your different buyer personas. Now you will have more than one of these. You might have half a dozen different ones. I'll give you an example. Um, imagine that you're doing marketing for a gym. This is really common for Facebook ads. You might have one ad where you're telling people that you can do lots of weight training, that you can be bulking up, um, and you can be putting on weight there. Whereas another type of customer, they want the exact opposite. They want to go to the gym to get into shape and to lose weight there. So you can imagine if you're showing the, the wrong ad there to the wrong person, they're just not going to work there. So that's why we need to match the right ad to that right person. It's not about the ad quality, it's about matching up that ad creative to the person. So you can go through this workbook at your leisure there. We've just got some exercises that you can fill in. And what we're really doing, so is I like to give the person a name there. And some of my best clients they actually do this. They, they've got like half a dozen uh, buyer personas with different names, but we can go through things like gender, age, uh, ethnicity, education, income, location, so on and so forth. So you can fill that in there. And then we want to think, okay, what brands do we identify with? Maybe we've got a, a product that's going to appeal to people that are into things like, you know, Apple, uh, Bose headphones, these sorts of things. Uh, so we can think about some brands to target there. What kind of websites? Where do they get their news from? What kind of hobbies are they into? Anything like that there. Um, yeah, just what's their pain points? What do they want out of your product there? So I recommend they go and fill that in there. And then once you've got that, you can put your results in here. Now, <clears throat> you don't need to get too formal with this. Sometimes just a, a pen and paper, quick five minute exercise there. But certainly this is where I start. When I take on a new client, uh, before I start even thinking about their ad creative or what, what kind of funnel that we're gonna be using, I want to be really thinking there about my buyer personas. So don't skip this bit out. It's gonna be really, really important for you there. So that's the first thing that we do for audience research. And the next tool that we're gonna be using is Facebook Audience Insights. So let me just open my browser here. And we're gonna go into Business Manager. So let me just quit this for a moment. Um, so if we go into Business Manager, you've got this uh, what I call hamburger icon on the left-hand side there. And we can see that we've got different tools. Now under Planning, we've got Audience Insights. So a brief overview is Audience Insights tells you everything about people on Facebook there. So at the moment, this is just looking at the default on Facebook, not very interesting. So what we can then do is we can put in our page. This is one thing that we can be doing. So I'm gonna put in our espresso. Now what we can see here is the gray is the average on Facebook. The blue is our audience. So at Espresso, you know, we're, we're targeting business users. People that like our page, they tend to be overrepresented in the 25 to 54 age range. No surprises at all there. Um, we can find things like relationship status. I'm not interested in that for a B2B product. We can look at the education level, we tend to be you know, university and grads. Uh, again, no surprises there. And look at their jobs there, IT, technical, computers, management, things like that there. But that could be giving you some good research on who to target. Now, the real gold is coming from this page likes. We have got location and activity tabs. I'm not gonna go through those today because uh, otherwise this would be a two or three hour session, but definitely go and have a play with this. And I recommend that everybody brews a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, spend some quality time, 20, 30 minutes uh, to do some research on this. This isn't something that you wanna rush. So what this does is this tells me that people that like Ad Espresso, what other things they like there. Um, you, you might not be familiar with these, but I can certainly recognize them straight away. Lead pages, like landing page software, 
Marketo, which you'd use there for your customer database. Outbrain is like an advertising network there. Microsoft in business, great. So we can get some idea of interest to be targeting there. But what I really, really want to do is look at my affinity scores. So if you only take one thing away from this section, look at the affinity score. So what is that? An affinity score is how likely above the baseline on Facebook, somebody that likes your page or likes that interest, uh, likes this other interest here. So we can see that people that like Ad Espresso are 5,216 times more likely than the baseline to like Microsoft advertising. And um, until a few days ago, this was called Bing advertising. Jason Nyback fan he seems to be like a Facebook guru, lead pages, Marketo, Outbrain, all kind of marketing tools. John Loom is like probably the best known Facebook guru out there. Um, and you can look and dive down there. Um, so I recommend that you do this. Now, not all of these are gonna be able to target on Facebook there. So um, I'd probably make a list of say 20 there and and you know th then you can like knock some out if you can't actually find them when you put them into targeting on Facebook, which we'll come to in a later section there. Also, sometimes you get some random ones there. Sometimes you get these big interests like Coca-Cola, Groupon, Domino's, Dunkin' Donuts, things like that, just because they're a huge interest that everybody likes. So just use a bit of common sense there and filter them out. And you know, as a if I don't, if I'm like an out as an agency for a company, I don't know the company that well, I will go and send these interests to the marketing team um, for that company and say, hey, do these interests make sense? Do these match your customers there? So use a bit of a common sense filter there. Now, sometimes you might not be wanting to be look at your page fans. What you can also do is put in these interests here. Now I'm gonna choose Hootsuite, which is our parent company. And so again, we can look at demographics. This is good just as a sanity check to make sure I haven't put in some uh, it's like wrong interest here. So I can see that we're targeting business users. Yeah, IT management, business, sales, everything looks right there. So let's go back to those page likes. And again, for, for speed here, let's go straight to affinity score. So people that like Hootsuite are really into digital marketer. Great website, we get on really well with uh, Ryan Dyson and all the team there. Social Media Examiner, one of the main uh, blogs there to get up to date with social media news. HubSpot, we actually use them as our CRM, and um, that's like our customer database. Facebook for Business, Tim Ferriss, he's quite an entrepreneurial guy. So, so that's quite good, you know, if you were like running ads for Hootsuite and you're thinking, okay, I know nothing about this company at all, where do I start? Where you can go into um, Audience Insights, you can load up those affinity scores and straight away you're on the right track there. So let's go back to our slides for a second. And just a little recap about this tool. Um, first is that you can only target 18 plus. Um, it's for privacy reasons, you can't go any lower than there. Um, it defaults to US 18 to 65 audience. So you can change that age, you can change the country there. I will say that sometimes for smaller countries, Facebook doesn't have enough data on the interests. So sometimes you have to look at the US data and then apply that to your own country there, but try it with different countries and see. And also the audiences must contain at least a thousand people, again, for privacy reasons there. Um, another tool that we can be doing to get an idea of what audience is to target is to use an audience breakdown. Now this applies to your current ads. We will be covering later um, what, what to do if you haven't got any ads running currently. But within Business Manager, there is this column here where you can be looking at your breakdown. So you can be looking at age, gender, um, country, region, that would be state in US. Uh, you can be looking at the platform as well that the ads run on like Instagram, Facebook, Audience Network, and so on. Uh, within Ad Espresso, we've got a very neat version of the audience breakdown. It's called Audience Insights. And so we can choose our breakdown and we can be choosing our conversion. And it just lays out all the data in a nice table there. So if you're an Ad Espresso user, this is better than using the breakdown tool in Ads Manager there. So just to give you a little recap on that. From you the left-hand menu, choose your breakdown. It's very similar to the ones that you get within Ads Manager. And then on the right there, you can choose whether you want like a pixel conversion. Maybe you just want to look at things like your post engagement or reactions or landing page views there. So, um, you know, use that historical data and then you can apply that to the audiences going forward there. Another little tool that we've got in our armory there, Google Analytics. If you're running traffic through to the website, you know, maybe you haven't got the Facebook ads running, but you have got a website up and running. Go into your Google Analytics, go to an overview, 
you can look at the age and you can be looking at the gender breakdown there. Um, this is sort of like Google's version of audience insights that Facebook's got, if you like. It's Google Keyword Planner, completely free. You just need a, a Google account there. You don't need to be running active Google ads to use it. And you know, you can put in one interest like here, I put in Ad Espresso, and then you can find all these keywords similar there. So of course, they're not going to map 100% to Facebook, but it's a great way of starting off. You know, if I was running ads for Ad Espresso, I can be putting that in there and it comes up with keywords like ads manager, Facebook ads manager, and so on. Obviously, this is quite obvious, but you know, I've got clients that are running uh, some quite obscure niche products that I've never heard of before. And so it's quite a challenge when you take on a new account, but using these uh, keyword planner and audience insights, I can find laser focused interests straight away there. Another thing that we can do here is we can be looking at the industry websites. So this is of course going to vary by industry, but an example here, um, I've got a subscription box client and when I took them on, I knew nothing about subscription boxes. So I can go into a website called My Subscription Addiction or MSA. It lists out about 99% of the subscription boxes on the market there. So for example, if I were to target uh, food subscription boxes, I can go into the discover section and they've got them all listed out there. So again, you know, just about every industry, you're gonna have these kind of review and news sites there. Um, so I hope that gives you some idea on that initial research. And just before we dive into the interest section, just going to uh, go to my colleague Tori and see if we've got any quick questions that have come in. Hey, Paul. Yes, we do have a couple of quick questions here. Um, see so one from Matic. Should there be one ad for both Facebook and Instagram or one for each platform? Um, I mean, that goes into more of the ad creative on there. there there's kind of pros and cons on there. Um, I, it really depends on the product. So what I do is I tend to split test the two and see if there's a big variation. If there is a big variation, then I might be running them separately. If they are very, very similar, then I will merge them together and that gives Facebook more opportunity there. So yeah, split test and see what happens and then make a decision based on that. Okay, perfect. Uh, we also have another quick one from Paula. How do you find out what websites they go to? We may be getting to this uh, a little bit more on the call as well. Um, to be looking at the kind of websites that you could be researching, um, so it really depends. If, if you're a business yourself, then do user surveys. I've, I've had businesses send me on these user surveys they've done, incredibly useful. So you might just be doing like a, a Google form. It could be something informal. Um, but that is something that I, I'd recommend that you do there. Um, if you're not a business, you're an agency, then just ask those questions to your client and really speak to the sales team. They're going to be um, able to help you there. There was one thing I missed out as well, so I'll cover that and then we'll go on to the interest section. Um, so if I just go out of slides for a, a second here, um, something that you can do is go onto your Facebook page here. And if you go into insights, then what you can be doing is going into the insights and just like um, getting the demographics on who's visiting your page here. So you can be going and having a look at like the followers that you can get there. You can look at people, get that age and gender breakdown again there and you're gonna be looking at the countries and really just look at your posts this way. You can have a look at your posts and see what kind of posts are resonating with people. Have a look at the comment or, you know, all of this feedback is extremely useful for you there. So we're going to move on now and um, we're going to go on to our next section and we're going to be looking at some interests and demographics now. So once we've got those interests that we thought of from um, user audience insights and keywords and so on, we can put them into Facebook Ads Manager. There's this detailed targeting section. Once you put one in, you get this suggestions box and then you can find extra to be targeting there. We can also do this in Ad Espresso, very similar. We've got a detailed targeting box and there's a light bulb there to get the extra suggestions. Now, one tip I wanted to share with you about interest targeting is we're finding interests related to that person, not just the product. So sometimes, yes, we can be targeting our competitors and similar brands, but sometimes we're just trying to find the right tribe of people. Now, the example I've got here, um, if you want to have a guess of who I was actually targeting here, I was targeting people interested in luxury real estate. So one of my coaching clients, they, they run a high-end uh, real estate agency. And, you know, we did all this uh, research that we covered in the first section. And what we found is that these people that are buying high-end real estate, 
they're not interested in on Facebook. They're not following realtors and things like that. Instead, they're interested in in uh, hobbies and interests like cruising, and they've all got American Express cards. So that's what we found was good to target there. Uh, another client sells fair trade products, and what we found is that you know targeting those other brands sometimes useful but not the full picture. And um, what we found is that people interested in fair trade they tend to be middle class, reasonably affluent. Um, Quite, quite well educated and so we found that interest like TED Talks, uh, NPR Public Radio in the US, um, National Geographic Magazine, uh, WWF World Wildlife Fund Charity, things like that were good so we're just trying to find the right people there. So what we're going to do now is have a bit more of a deep dive into interests because there's actually different types of interests we'd actually call those demographics. So let's run through these and you'll see that once you go and, and put up an interest in either Ad Espresso or Ads Manager, you get this tool tip and take notice of this. So first one is job titles, absolutely fantastic for B2B. This is a bit like LinkedIn targeting. This is where somebody's typed in, you know, I am a real estate broker, highly accurate. There's no guesswork taking place here. Just be aware, avoid the generic ones. Um, a really good example is CEO. Every kid on Facebook says they're the CEO of Nike or the CEO of Apple. If you don't believe me, actually go and put this in as targeting there. I think we found um, about 1,300 CEOs of Nike uh, listed on Facebook. So you, you need the more specific ones there. That can be very useful then. You can also use employers. Again, this is going to be highly accurate that somebody's typed in, hey, this is the company I work for. Great for targeting, obviously more for B2B than for consumer targeting. Um, not every employer is going to be found on Facebook. There's only a handful there of the larger employers. If I have a look, that can be good. And make sure that you know, the, you're know you filtering out things like you've got employers, job titles. Not quite sure where schools is showing here for Walmart, but make sure that you're not targeting the wrong one there. Schools, that's something else they can be targeting. And generally for B2B, um, that's something I use once I've exhausted employers and my job titles. For example, a lot of people on Facebook want to target lawyers, doctors, and dentists. There's obviously a lot of money there. Um, and you know, if I'm targeting like lawyers, then I would be using job titles and then some of the larger law firms. And then I could be looking at things like law schools. Uh, one of my clients actually listed about 70 or 80 Law schools, they just spend you know, a little bit of time going through and finding them all. Same with medical schools, things like that. So that could be something to look at and a little bit you know, left field targeting that not everybody is thinking about. So it allows you to get some untapped audiences there. There's also what Facebook calls behaviors. So this is where Facebook's got some data on, on users there. We know that Facebook knows quite a lot about us. So for example, maybe if I was selling mobile phone cases, and I have one specific for you know, an iPhone 8, rather than targeting people interested in iPhones because we know every kid's going to be like following the, uh, you know, Apple. Um, instead, we can actually like, you know, we can see here we can be targeting people that actually use that particular device to log on to Facebook. Hey, that's going to be a hundred times more accurate there and a lot more up to date there. We can also be using demographics. This is where Facebook's got some third party data still. A lot of it has been taken away last year due to GDPR and privacy concerns. But you know, for example, targeting parents rather than just like choosing some random parent interests on Facebook, we can actually be using this demographic data there. And then last but not, last but not least, we have actually got that real interest data there. So this is where Facebook's trying to group people into interests. It can be based on Facebook pages, can be based on interactions on Facebook, interactions on websites and so on. It's not 100% not transparent where this data comes from. So it's always worth asking yourself that question there. And what we want to be doing here is be careful with these large poorly defined interests so for example sometimes i've had clients selling like things like cat food pet accessories and so they just target cats you know there are 310 million people on facebook interested in cats and not many of those will have cats they are interested in funny cat videos and keyboard cat and nine cat and so on there so we've got to be a bit more specific i when i t sell things to cat owners I would be targeting by certain animal charities, by sanctuaries, by pet food brands, um, you know, pet pet stores, those sorts of things. There, we want to go specific, not to 
and not too generic. Always ask yourself, how does Facebook define this interest? If we can't answer that question ourselves, then there's a chance that Facebook's just going for very generic large interests. So go for some smaller interests there. Um, other bits of demographics now, I'll move away a little bit from those interests. We can target by relationship status. My advice is do not do this. Uh, just go for all. Um, what happens on Facebook is apart from sometimes the teenagers, um, everybody just pets not specified. Nobody can be bothered to update their, their relationship status on there. And you know, that, there are so many different ones here. Is that, are we really gonna get people into the right bucket there? Probably not. We, we've tested this. We've done lots and lots of split testing. Not specified group always works better, whatever you're selling, just because it's the largest pool of people it keeps down that CPM that costs per thousand impressions there. Um, age targeting, the default is 18 to 65 plus, um, but you can go down as far as 13 years old. Um, that's the, in Facebook's terms of service, that's how old you have to be to have a Facebook account. Um, little glitch here, well, well, not so much a glitch, but just a little quote to be aware of, is that 65, equals 65 plus. So certainly if you're doing B2B, I sometimes stop at 64, because 65, I then get lots of retired people, could be in their 70s, 80s, and so on there. So, you know, I get some interest, but generally not so many leads. Um, little caution is some products can only be marketed at 18 plus. Um, you know, anything diet related, um, cell phone contracts, gambling, dating, anything like that. You can look in Facebook ads policies, but if you're not sure, just be very careful targeting under 13 years old, you get some ad rejections. And alcohol depends on your country there. So US is gonna be 21 plus. If I tell from my accent, I'm based in the UK, we can have targeting from 18 plus for alcohol there. Um, otherwise you'll get your ads rejected. Check Facebook ads policies, just Google that if you're not sure about anything. Now, if you wanna see how accurate these are, um, a really good exercise is to actually look at your own Facebook ad preferences. So you go into the settings section of your own Facebook ad account there, and you'll see a section here for ad preferences. So load that up here and we can look at some of the interests. So what does Facebook find for me? My top interests. Um, I actually thought my Facebook account had been hacked for a second because my top interests include dresses, spas. Um, we've got dogs. I've actually got six cats. I haven't got any dogs at all there. Um, motherhood, so yoga. A lot of interests I'm not into. Now, I will give a very big disclaimer that being a Facebook advertiser, I do do lots of research for clients. So I might be clicking on ads and liking Facebook pages that as a typical user, I wouldn't be. But just have a look for yourself. Now, I will say that some of the other, once we go into the more specific ones, they can be very, very accurate there. So I think we talked about this before with like the cat interest, that when you go for these generic interests, they're not very accurate, that Facebook's just, bucketing people at random there. But when we go for more specific brands, they can be better. So some of my interests on here, I shopped at Whole Foods about a week or two ago. We use HubSpot here at Adespresso. Um, I, I buy random stuff from Kickstarter. I do work for Hootsuite. Um, there's some UK supermarkets like Asda, Sainsbury's, Waitrose. Don't need to be familiar with those, but I've shopped from all of those in the last couple of weeks. Indiegogo, just like Kickstarter. Uh, social media marketing, digital marketing, lead generation. So some of those are scarily accurate there. So go for the more specific interests and do some split testing on them. Is that we've seen there, 50% absolute garbage, not related at all. The other ones are highly accurate there. So you've got to be doing some testing there. Now we're going to be moving on now and having a look at the other main um, type of targeting for cold traffic, which is lookalike audiences. So what is a lookalike? It's a way of reaching new people that are likely to be interested in your business because they're similar to your best existing customers. We basically give Facebook a seed audience. Facebook goes away and find an audience of people with very similar characteristics. As we know, Facebook's got lots of data on us. It knows who's watching videos, who's engaging with posts, um, who's clicking on ads, who's visiting websites and what they're doing on the website. The pixel is on millions and millions of websites. So it's highly accurate data and it's very up to date. You know, always bear in mind with those interest targets that sometimes they might be five years plus old. You know, Facebook's been mentioning for 10 years. Maybe somebody's getting picked up by wedding interests and maybe you're a wedding photographer, you target those, but they got married five years ago, they're now divorced, who knows? Um, so I'm not saying don't use interest, but you know, lookalikes are based on so much data and it's really, really fresh data. 
So let's have a little dig into this a little bit more here. So we're just going back to uh, Business Manager here. And what we can be doing is going into um, uh, Asset Library. This is basically our Audiences section. This is under Assets there. And so if we go into Audiences section here, we can click on Create Audience and we can go to Lookalike Audiences. So let's have a look at some options here. First of all, to create a lookalike audience, we need to give it that seed audience. Um, there needs to be over 100 people in the audience. Facebook, you know, says preferably 1,000 people. A bit more data, the better. Um, but it's about quality. So if you start getting a really diluted audience, then maybe we need to narrow it down a bit. Let's just click on this. Um, Facebook for e-commerce loves value-based audiences. This is where it's getting the value from your pixel uh, passed through there. You can be using things like offline event sets, the product catalogs. There's loads of other things that we can be using. We're gonna cover those in the next few slides, but have a look and say so what we really want to do is go back into that, that mindset and think, okay, is this seed audience a good match for the people that we wanna be targeting? Like if I wanna be doing lead generation, I'm gonna be creating an audience of my leads. If I wanna be doing e-commerce, I'm gonna be creating an audience of my purchases and so on there. So what we can do is we can be putting in that audience there uh, let's put in website visitors. Well, actually, no, I'll put in my Facebook page here. I can then be putting in a location. You can be putting in multiple countries if you want to there. Um, I usually just target one, one at a time there, but we can be putting in multiple. And then the audience size. So what is this? Um, this is a percentage based on the number of Facebook users in that country on Facebook. In the US, there's 216 million Facebook users, give or take. So 1% lookalike is 2.16 million there. So, you know, think how powerful this is. With a few clicks, we've discarded the worst 99% of the audience, just like that. We just click on this button and we've created that audience. Um, if you go up to 2%, that doubles 10%. No surprises there, 21.6 million. Um, as to the percentage to use, the larger the percentage, then the weaker the affinity. Um, but I would say look at the country that you're in. You know, countries like Scandinavian countries like Denmark, uh, Sweden, Norway, you've got a pretty small uh, population. So 1% lookalike is going to be sometimes in the tens of thousands. So that's where you might go up to 5 or 10% lookalike. In the UK, I use a 3% lookalike quite often. I'm aiming for that kind of 1 million audience. Australia, I use like a 5% lookalike. If you're not sure, you can go and create some more. You can just go and create these now. They're going to be completely free. So go wild with creating audiences. They're going to be extremely useful for you there. So let's go back to our slides for a second. And what types of lookalikes can we use? Uh, depends on your goals there. For lookalike audiences, maybe we want to create the that value uh, audience based off the pixel. Value audiences are really, really good. It looks at like recency, you know, how... how <coughs> how recent it was that somebody purchased, looks at the frequency and looks at the value. We can also upload a data file with their customer lifetime value. Maybe we can filter by purchases over X number of dollars or local currency. We could be looking at how many times they purchased. We could be doing this, this is quite new from a product data set. We can be looking at our other pixels. Um, I don't use these until I've saturated some of my other lookalikes, but if I'm running high ad spends, I can be looking at lookalikes based on initiate checkouts, add to carts, or viewing products there. If I'm not doing e-commerce, but I still want to get people on my website, I could be doing a lookalike audience based on leads, either from pixel files or from my uh, data file audience there. Um, we'll come to this in a second. I could be looking at segmenting out my uh, website visitors. So maybe I just want to, rather than people that visit our blog page, I can be filtering by people that, that take a tour or go to our pricing page. They're gonna be much more valuable to create a lookalike from. You can also create a custom audience of the top uh, 25, 10 or 5% of website visitors. If you get lots of people bounce, they're not gonna be very useful to create a lookalike from, so you can filter those out. Or, you know, if you're just starting off, you can create an audience of all website visitors there. Um, if you're a new business or you just don't have much website traffic or not a website at all, you can create lookalikes based on video views, such as 10 second video views, 50%, 75% watch time. There's lots of options there. You can do it off uh, event responses or you can do it off page fans there. 
Now, the question we get asked all the time is what's going to be best, interests or lookalikes? And so to settle this argument, we ran a $1,000 experiment. We actually finished this yesterday, and uh, you're going to have the first look at this. So the aim of this $1,000 experiment was to get webinar signups for this actual webinar, in fact, there. So we created this ad, took people through to the landing page, and then what we uh, tracked on the website or objective was to get complete registrations, basically people to sign up for that webinar there. So we created two different audiences for this. The first audience is a 1% lookalike in the US, and it's based off a complete registration, because that's the event that we're tracking. Like we said earlier, try and make the seed audience um, you know, relevant to what your goal is there. And we just, of course, excluded people that have already signed up. And this was in the US, 21 to 64. We then created a very similar audience, but instead of using that lookalike, um, we used interest. And I used that audience insights tool. I used six audiences. Um, I've only got five here listed here, but we had animator as well. So we had uh, six interests. And the aim there was to create two audiences, both with a 1.9 million audience size there. And I had a quick look at the audience overlap, no problem there. We've got a 11% um, overlap, so very, very tiny. So we've got two good audiences, one lookalike, one interests, um, very, very distinct there, and we can see which is working best. So if I go to look at the results, when we aggregate that all together, uh, interests versus lookalikes, just look at that data here. This campaign worked well. We've got over 1% click-through rate. A um, couple of dollars per click, it is a B2B campaign, so we're never going to get super cheap clicks. We spend that $1,000. Um, we split that evenly between the two ad sets there, so $500 for interest, $500 for lookalikes. And we're getting a good cost per conversion there for our webinar signups. Look at that very high conversion rate. So which one worked best? Here's the results. Um, we can see that this blue line is uh, lookalike and red is interests. So in this case, lookalike worked better. We'll say not a huge difference between them. If we look at the stats here, we did get a higher click-through rate for the lookalikes, a lower cost per click, um, but conversion rates very, very similar there. So, you know, take home message there is that lookalikes can work well. I use them probably about 60 to 70% of the time, um, partly because they perform well, partly just for convenience, like we saw a couple of clicks. You can create a lookalike audience if you've got a good seed audience. You're not having to do all that audience research there. Um, but there are other times when interest can work well. You know, this is just one test. Imagine with a bit of tweaking of the interest that we included, we could easily get that cost down, that CPA down to match lookalikes there. So definitely test interests. And also, if you're starting off with a new account, you haven't got those seed audiences, interests are going to give you very, very good results there. And also, if you run high budgets, we will be covering this more on our scaling webinar um, next month. But, but what you sometimes need to do is if you burn through some of your obvious lookalikes, switch to some interests and find some new pools of people there. So I hope that you find that useful there about experiments. Um, next there, the, the kind of like last main section is we're going to be looking through some custom audiences. Just before we do this, just going to check in with Tori and see if we've got any quick questions there. Hey, Paul, we do. Uh, so Barbara asks, how often should you update your lookalike audience file? Cool, so we're gonna be covering this uh, a little bit later there, but a lot of the audiences are gonna be, the lookalikes are dynamic if you have a dynamic source audience. So yeah, we'll be covering this in a, in a second there, but that's one nice thing about using lookalikes, is if you give it that seed audience that dynamically updates, such as website visitors from pixel files, the lookalike updates, so you can create them, and then in six months time, they're still gonna be extremely valuable there. Perfect, another quick one here from Marie. Would you advise adding a few interests to narrow your lookalike audience a bit? Aha, I'm glad you asked that Marie. So a real top tip there for you is sometimes you can get the best of both worlds by using a lookalike audience uh, layered in with interests. So your general targeting you've got for cold traffic is, you know, on one side interests, the other side lookalikes, or you can use a larger lookalike, for example, in the US, a 10% lookalike, and then layer it in with some broad interests. What we're always trying to do with our targeting is get down to, for cold traffic, around about 1 million people. That's what I find is the sweet spot. That's, that's not anything set in, in stone. We want at least 100,000, and you know, one, two, three million is fine there. 
um, but that can work extremely well. Now, if we used like a 1% lookalike and then put niche interests, that would be no good. It would just be too small. But broad lookalike with broad interests, we're getting the best from those both worlds there can work extremely well. Um, so yeah, keep those questions coming in. We're going to move on to custom audiences now, and then we'll go through a lot of questions at the end here. So custom audiences, there's five main types. I'm just going to give you a brief overview, but remember you've got that custom audience workbook, uh, which has got 60 odd pages going through this in detail there. Um, so we've got the five main types. It's going to be an email or data file custom audience. Um, the next one is our WCAs for website custom audience based off those pixel files. Uh, mobile apps, that can be good if you've got an app there, obviously. Um, offline, so this is where you can create um, data sets for offline activities, maybe like car dealerships you're not selling online, so you have that offline data. And then there's loads of engagement audiences that you can use. So let's have a quick dig into this. Let's go back to Facebook here, and we'll just exit from our lookalikes. And instead, we're going to have a look at our custom audiences. So we could probably spend a whole hour on this, but for, for the sake of convenience here, because of, of time, I'm just going to give you a brief overview. So that website traffic, if we click on this, we can uh, make sure we've got the right pixel there, and then we can be looking at all website visitors. We can be putting a time window, like seven days. We can go up to 180 days. If ever you're not sure about anything, just use the tool tip there. Uh, we could be doing other things here. So we can have, like we mentioned, we look like visitors by time spent on site. We can filter by certain things like specific pages. We can do includes and excludes. So many options. So have a have a play with these. Again, you know, they're free to create. If you don't use them, no big deal. You can just leave them there or you can delete them. So d there's no fear with this. You can just have a play with these. Um, we can be doing this on pixel events. So like we saw for our $1,000 experiment, I can be creating an audience of my complete registrations for the webinar signups, and I can exclude that audience so we're not targeting people saying, hey, sign up for my webinar when they've already done. We can also then create a lookalike off that. Um, like Marie's question, this seed audience would then be dynamic, and we can then go and have a dynamic lookalike. Um, if we're going to create that lookalike, we'd probably use 180-day audience. Just give it a name, and away you go. I would say with the naming, give it a very logical naming convention and definitely put that time windows in there. Otherwise, once you've created, you know, 50, 100 audiences and it's six months ago, you'll forget which ones they are there. Uh, customer file here. This is where you upload the email addresses, usually from a CSV file. You can include lifetime value as well, or we can just use a normal file here. And there are 15 different identifiers, so you definitely want email address. You can put in other things to help Facebook match them if you've got them, like phone number, you can be putting in surname, zip code, city, all sorts of things. Uh, choose the data origin, whether it's from customers or from partners, and upload your file, give it a name, and away you go. Very, very simple. One little thing there is sometimes Facebook um, it tries to match the wrong identifiers. Like I've had it where I've got a customer ID, like an internal ID, and Facebook thinks it's like a zip code, and that could really mess with things. So don't just blindly click on the options. You get these fields, and you can say to Facebook yes or no to include it. So make sure you match them up correctly there. Uh, let's go back a second. That app activity, you can be doing mobile apps. And I don't think we've got an app here, but you can be doing things like um, whether somebody's opened the app, whether they've got a certain level of a game, whether they've purchased, whether they're top purchasers. This is all in that custom audience ebook. Offline activity where you've got that offline data file. Um, maybe you've got like a, a really good uh, a CRM that like till system, and you can upload that data in from a Excel file there. You can be creating audiences based on video views there. So we can be choosing um, basically like three seconds, 10 seconds, different percentages there. We can be choosing one or more videos, and this is up to 365 days. For example, one of my clients does a Facebook Live twice a week, so we can create a custom audience of that Facebook Live, and then we could be retargeting them with a purchase offer. Um, also, if you're starting out on Facebook ads, that, that could be video views. You can run some video view ads, and they can create that custom audience very, very quickly. So great way of targeting there. 
Um, we've got the Instagram there. So if you've got an Instagram business profile, you can also do a bit of a, a like a one T tactic here. You, you know, Instagram's great for engagement. So you could be running your organic traffic on Instagram and then you could be retargeting them on Facebook where sometimes they're a little bit more likely to purchase. So many options here. Um, again, if you're not sure of the exact combination, just go over the tool tip and Facebook does a really good job of explaining it there. So that's that's really useful. Lead forms, if you've got any lead forms, you can have people that have opened the form, uh, people that opened but didn't submit or people that filled it in there. We've got Facebook events there and there's loads and loads of options on here. So for example, you could be building an audience of people that says that they're going or interested in your event. And then two days before the event, you could run an ad just on a small budget, give them a nudge saying, hey, make sure you turn up to our event there. Or maybe they came along to one event and then you're running a similar event. You could be building that audience and, re and targeting those with a new event ad there. And um, there's even things you can do with ticket sales. Uh, Facebook's got an awesome integration with Eventbrite. And so you can be um, you know, creating an audience of people that have bought tickets and then maybe giving them more information about the event, getting to buy more tickets, whatever. There's so many possibilities. So create all those different audiences there. You can even dial down by specific events. Uh, instant experience, this used to be called Canvas. So this is where you can be building, uh, it's a bit like a landing page, but it's on Facebook that people can see on mobile there. So you can build those up, Facebook page, Works very similar to your Instagram business profile there. So we can have audiences, different ones here. So we can have people that have engaged with our page um, or have engaged with a certain post or ad, sent messages, saved posts, all sorts of things there. So lots and lots of options that we can be targeting. So again, it's something where you want to spend a bit of time, be familiar with those so many powerful options that we've got to choose from, from our custom audiences. And this is basically why this year digital marketing um, which is mainly Facebook and uh, Google, but you've got other platforms as well. They're overtaking the traditional media such as TV, radio, and print. Um, because you know you put an ad out there in a magazine or on, on TV, and that's it, you can just put it out there. When you're doing digital marketing, you can then be building those funnels and really doing some audience analysis and getting some really good results there. So I recommend that you have a really good play with those audiences. Um, just a simple two-step funnel sometimes that we saw, uh, run an event ad and then go and give people a reminder with a, a custom audience there. Now let's go back into our slides here. And just some little tips and, and uh, reminders here about custom audiences. Now they can take up to 24 hours to form. Sometimes they're a lot faster, um, but I get those queries that people think there's an error with their audience. Like Facebook sometimes, instead of just saying, hey, I need more time, it will say audience not formed or audience error. Um, just ignore that. It just needs a little bit more time to form there. Um, also, sometimes you know you upload a customer file and you think, okay, there's not enough people on here. Facebook isn't matching it properly. Just give it time. You know, if, although they've got some very good servers there, they did need that time to match all that data there. So just chill and let Facebook have that 24 hours there. Also, since last year, for privacy reasons, some custom audiences they don't list the size. They just uh, have this. Uh, message that says under a thousand people or just not available. Again, that causes confusion because you think, hey, I know my audience is larger than a thousand. What's happening there? Uh, that's just a little way, a little glitch of what, how Facebook explains it there. Custom audiences um, and lookalikes do update all dynamically unless they're based on a static custom audience, which could be email. But hey, we've got a little trick here to go and make your custom audiences dynamic. And that's Ad Espresso Data Sync. So if you're an Ad Espresso customer, you get this included as a free tool. Data sync, rather than having to do, you know, download a CSV file from your CRM like uh, HubSpot and then upload it, you know, that's a lot of work. And then you've got to create new audiences and so on. We can make everything dynamic for you. I'm just going to walk you through this very simple. There's five steps that you do. So you give your sync a name. We then choose the data source. So if we want to create that custom audience from our data, we choose our CRM. In this example, I'm going to choose HubSpot. I'm going to select my HubSpot account and I'm going to choose the list to sync up. I can then choose my source. I want to send this to Facebook in this case. I can then choose my Facebook ad account and I can choose the custom audience to sync it to. 
I can then choose what fields to map, like we saw when you're uploading a data file to Facebook. You can map various things like email addresses, phone number, gender, date of birth, and so on there. And hey presto, done. Very, very simple to set up this sync. And then, yeah, rather than having to keep updating, uh, well, exporting those CSV files, importing them into Facebook, and everybody forgets to do that, just set it and forget it. Very, very simple tool. And that's completely free for uh, Ad Espresso customers there. Extremely popular tool. Another little thing that you get in um, Ad Espresso is what we call our asset manager. So, like we saw, you can be easily creating hundreds of custom audiences, and you get confused, especially if you're an agency there and you're dealing with lots of clients. So within Ad Espresso, we have an asset manager there, and you can create folders. Um, like we've seen here, we've got folders for different names. We've got one here for Camille, one for Carlo, one for myself, just sneaking in at the bottom there. And we can create different uh, custom audiences, put them in different folders. So Ad Espresso is great, especially if you're a volume marketer or really aimed at agencies there. So that's kind of a blueprint. So I know there's a lot to cover there, but I just wanted to give you a, an idea of some of the basics and download those workbooks and then just spend that time to go through some of the tools. So let's finish up by just having a, a quick look at the future of targeting on Facebook. Um, something that I saw in Business Manager just this week is that when I uploaded a customer file, there's now this create a household audience there. So basically that you you tell that these you've got this custom audience and Facebook can find people that are in the same household. Now this was broken, it's not working at the moment and Facebook are saying that they're working on it. Um, so I don't know why they've released it when it's broken, it just doesn't work. But that's something they actually announced two years ago. And you know they've taken a lot of time to roll this out. Uh, so hopefully that's coming, keep an eye on that. Whether it actually comes or not, we'll have to wait and see. Another little um, preview here is this really fuzzy, fuzzy graphic has been going doing the rounds in like Facebook advertising groups that we might be able to create a, a Facebook audience based off Facebook groups. Now, there's a lot of debate about this. Nobody's actually seen it for real in their accounts. Is it something that's Facebook's testing internally? Um, is it going out to selected advertisers or is it somebody just doing fake photoshops here? You know, that does happen. We're not sure, but certainly Facebook said in their F8 conference that Facebook groups are one of the real key things uh, for the heart of the Facebook app. It's rather than just having this like, you know, kind of like town square that they're going to be looking more towards these living rooms of groups like Facebook groups. So the, the chances of being able to target Facebook groups in the future might be coming, it's just something to bear in mind though, we'll have to see what happens there. And then we can also be using, well, just something that's gonna be in the news there that customers can use rather, rather than us, is that Facebook's gonna give them more privacy, more control. Now, like we saw in the settings, customers can all already see what interests they're being targeted by, they can delete those, they can see what advertisers have got their customer file data and delete those, but Facebook's going to give advertisers, sorry, the users even more control on this. How they're going to roll it out, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully there's not going to be a big red delete all data button, hopefully it's going to be a bit more nuanced on that, um, but that's just something to bear in mind is that, you know, having those email lists uh, could be quite useful there because it, sometimes some of that website pixel data uh, users might be able to go and delete that. So thanks for being with me here and going through the targeting blueprint. Um, if you find that this is just, you, you know, it's helpful, but you just need a bit more one-on-one -on -one personal guidance there, then myself and the Ad Espresso Marketplace team are on hand to help you. That we're not just the software tool, we've actually got some of the best Facebook advertisers in the world here uh, on our team here, and we're ready to help so we can do um, tactical reviews, basically a 10 minute campaign review of a single campaign. If you're an Ad Espresso customer, go into the services tab of your account. If you're not, then you can go to our tour page and find out more about this. We also cover Google Ads. We've got some really awesome uh, Google experts. We've got like an Enrica, Bruno and Valerio on our team there. Um, if you want that more kind of one in one, you actually want to go and hop on a call with us and have a power hour, a strategy session. I, I just love talking about Facebook ads. Um, again, you can book this by going into the services tab of your Ad Espresso account. Or if you're a new user, you can find out on our tour page. Basically, you can take out a completely free trial of um, Ad Espresso and then you can book any of the services. So, you know, hopefully you will be a customer, but if you decide, okay, um, I just want the strategy session, just take out a free trial and then you can book that in the services tab there. 
Um, finally, we do a concierge service. Now, this doesn't tread on the toes of agencies. We're not a full service agencies. We don't do creative design. We're not specialist copywriters. But, you know, if you find that you do want somebody like a, a dedicated Facebook or Google geek to run your campaigns there. So maybe you've got the basics from this webinar. But, hey, you know, you haven't got the time or the patience to implement this. We can actually run these for you. Um, again, you can look at the tour page there. You can drop me a message, pull at espresso.com, and I can hook you up with Francesco, who's our uh, team leader for our concierge service there. So hope you found that useful. And I'm going to open this up to questions now. I can see loads and loads of questions here. So I'm going to hand this over to Tori, who's picked some of the best questions today. Awesome. You guys have been keeping me busy all through this webinar with different questions. So thank you so much for, uh, for all of them. Uh, all right. So first one here is going to be from Augusto. He says, how many interests can be effectively combined? Some experts say choosing a large number uh, will confuse the algorithm. Others recommend using 50 plus interests. Okay. So, well, personally, I would say around about half a dozen is quite good. Be just because you don't want to isolate what themes are working for you. So if you put in like 50 different interests, uh, was it the cat interest you put in that worked? Was it the dog interest? Was it the the rabbit interest when you're selling those pet supplies? Who knows? You then can't drill down and improve your targeting. So don't put too many interests there. If you have got an um, Ad Espresso account, even if you combine the interests, we can come up with a neat little box on your dashboard that tells you what interests are getting the most clicks there. So that can be quite useful. But yeah, keep it to around about half a dozen. Also, we'll be talking about this on our scaling webinar, um, which is going to be next month. That what we found is it's not just about the number of interests, but it's about the total audience size that we're aiming for, around about 1 million people in our cold traffic campaigns there. Um, so that's something to take in, bear in mind, is that you know if we use 50, audience, uh, 50 interests, and we end up with like, you know, 10, 20, 30 million people that we're targeting, we might as well be targeting at random there. Uh, so that's what we want to be doing is use a few interests that are kind of medium size, you know, quite specific like we saw there, go for, you know, particular brands there, particular interests that we can work out how Facebook defined those. Okay. Uh, another question, a quick one here from May. Uh, May asked if we get a free campaign review if we're an Ad Espresso customer. Uh, May you do not, but they are cheaper than if you were not a customer. I believe 20 or $30 difference in that price there. Yep, they can be cheaper also. Uh, I'm not trying to do a pitch here, but we do have a free um, Facebook group. It's called Ad Espresso University, which is for customers only. And I hang out in there all day. Tori does as well. Also, the whole team um, that's specifically just for customers. So, very high quality of conversation. If you've got any questions about your campaign, pop them in there and we can give you free, unlimited advice there. All right, um, next one we have here. How audience is too small? What size audience is too small? Okay, so I mean, from a technical point of view here, if we're just looking at when, when Facebook's gonna create errors. So for custom audience, you need at least 20 people in that audience there. Um, for a lookalike audience, you need at least 100 people there. So that's the minimum there. Um, but really, saying for cold traffic, I aim for around about a million. Sometimes if I'm doing a geographic area, that is going to be smaller. If I'm like you know, running ads for a gym and it's only going to be applicable to a 20 mile radius, then find my audience is smaller. Um, but then I'm just not going to be using too many interests or lookalikes on top of that there. Um, but yeah, I want to keep it over 100,000, around about a million is good, two, three million is fine. Above that, then I'm not really using the full power of my Facebook targeting. So I can be going for more specific interests or more uh, smaller percentage lookalikes there. So that, give, that gives you an idea. For retargeting, that's completely different. We have got a retargeting webinar on this. If you go onto the webinar page on Ad Espresso website or go onto the Ad Espresso channel on YouTube, you'll see uh, seven ways to retarget webinar. And we discussed this, that basically small, well-qualified retargeting audiences, size can be much smaller on there. That's absolutely fine because we've already qualified the audience. Okay, great. Thanks so much for that. Um, so one here that we have um, regarding targeting gender. So we see that there have been some updates regarding the ability to target and exclude gender. Uh, so maybe if you want to give a little bit more information on those, uh, Paul. 
Yeah, this is this is something that's a developing area. So first of all, to give you a big picture is that you used to be able to target by sexuality, um, you know, whether you're interested in men, women or anything like that. And Facebook have to remove that for privacy reasons. Also with gender targeting, you can still target just a, a, a single gender. That's fine there. Um, but you can't run it for certain types of ads. Um, the main one that we've seen in the news recently is with employment ads, is that some people were targeting ads just at males or just at females uh, for jobs. And Facebook were taken to court by certain um, you know, kind of kind of uh, activist groups in America, quite rightly so. Uh, so now when you're targeting job ads, you have to use the default 18 to 65, both genders there. It's also some things like housing as well. Um, there's certain protected um, kind of targeting where you have to do broad targeting there. Quite rightly so is that, you, you know, people shouldn't be dialing their ads down to. And, you know, most people were doing this totally legitimately. Like they, they had a certain job where maybe they thought certain people, certain age ranges were more interested in. But really, Facebook would prefer we have to now target broadly because, we you know, there's other people that you might be missing out that really want that job, that want that housing there. So, Yes, there are certain categories that will be excluded. And what will happen is Facebook will just reject the ads there. You'll get a message um, in Ad Espresso and Ads Manager saying that this ad is blocked, go and change your targeting there. So yeah, you know, things have changed a lot in the last year is that before Cambridge Analytica, Facebook, you know, was a little bit like the wild rest is that there's lots of um, targeting that we could do. Um, and, and there was also lots of exclusions that we could do. And there's those exclusions that, Facebook has really clamped down on. So we've got a much more ethical ad system there. I think that's quite good, but also obviously for some industries, it's a bit more challenging there. Great. Our next question here is from Justin. He asks, what's the best way to target high net worth customers? Okay, um, for start using lookalikes is gonna be pretty good on there. Um, last year, Facebook took away the partner categories where we could dial into um, that inspiration from partners such as Experian and Axiom. So people could just target by, you know, people that we knew were high net worth. Um, there are a couple of uh, interests. If you do search on Facebook, there is a high net worth one, but I find they're not very good. There's, you know, most of those have been removed. The ones that are left, everybody targets them. Um, I've seen people selling $20 products and they always want to target millionaires. I don't know why, um, but I would say, do like I did in that real estate example. Think about your customers as a group there. You can target by car brands. Um, you can be targeted by you know, the kind of credit cards that they have, by their holiday activities like cruising, things like that. You know, what kind of magazines, uh, TV shows, kind of websites like that. So do a bit more research on there. Um, so you can use a lookalike, that might be worthwhile. Or just think about the, do that audience research like we did in step one of this webinar and find those interests related to that kind of tribe of people there. And the results will pay off for you because like I was saying, everybody just uses the same boring interests to find high net worth people. And Facebook is an auction system. So if everybody's targeting the same people, the ad costs are very high. The people keep seeing the same ads. Uh, you know, they see 10 Rolex ads a day and, and they're just not gonna take any notice of them. But by thinking differently, you'll find some new people lower ad costs and you'll get much more success with your ads there. Perfect. So our next question actually ties into the latter part of your answer. Uh, Suresh asks if there is a way to find interests that few people are targeting. So I guess interests that are maybe not as competitive as main interests, quote unquote. Yeah, so what I do there is either in the audience insights uh, tool or if I'm just going into um, like I'm, I'm actually going to create an, a campaign there in Ads Manager where I've got my interest box for targeting. If I put in one interest, I've then got the, I can then find those other interests. So if I'm creating the ad set, I can put on, click on the suggestions button, find other ones. In Audience Insights, I can be putting in my first interest, get that list of like 20 or so interests, and then I can be putting, copy and pasting one, and then putting that in the interest selector and finding the other ones. So I do that, I kind of riff off these. So like we saw, I might be starting with Hootsuite as an interest, and then I can find something that's a good affinity like uh, HubSpot, and then I could be putting HubSpot in as the main interest and finding the other ones and so on and so forth there. So you use all those different research tools that like we saw there was about six or seven different research tools that you can be using. And so just think, yeah, just think outside of the box. 
Um, another example we found is that people targeting weight loss ads, they always target Slimming World and Weight Watchers. Um, the CPM, your cost per thousand impressions, goes eye-wateringly high because there are thousands of advertisers targeting the same interests. And this audience doesn't perform well because they're already, you know, signed up with a diet plan and they are seeing like every other ad is a diet ad. So sometimes if you think differently, like one of my clients, um, he was aiming weight loss ads at uh, brides to be like basically doing like a bride fit boot camp worked extremely well because people aren't using that targeting. But these brides who are trying to like slim down, get into their um, uh, wedding gowns there worked incredibly well, super cheap leads there. Um, so yeah, think differently. Think about who your audience is there and you can get some really good results. Great. Uh, next question here is from Andy. Andy asks, what would you recommend for targeting with local businesses, specifically with low population areas? Um, with low population areas, just keep it quite broad there. Maybe you put a, a reasonably broad filter there uh, for age. And otherwise, you know, just, just keep keep broad there. Facebook is still going to do some good optimization there. The challenge for local businesses is really with saturation of the audience there. Um, you know, your cost per thousand impressions is still quite cheap on Facebook. We'd always like it to be lower. But, you know, in real terms, we compare it to TV, radio, magazine advertising. It's still pretty cheap there. So, hey, some of these impressions are going to be wasted. Who cares? Maybe we've only wasted five or ten dollars there to, to get another thousand impressions there. But, you know, there's a chance we could get one or two new leads or customers there. So keep it quite broad and that should work for you. Um, so I can see time's getting on here. So we're just going to take a couple more questions before we wrap up today now. Sure. All right. Um, so next one here. This one sounds more of a general Facebook question. Uh, but do you feel that the recent Facebook ad tools added for small businesses will allow them to run their own ads, specifically without agencies, it looks like? <laughs> well, um, it's, it's kind of yes and no. Is that um, before, you know, if we go back to when I started on Facebook advertising, um, custom audiences and look like, certainly lookalike audiences were quite poor. So we had spent ages kind of handcrafting these, these laser focused audiences of like 10,000 people. And they would be having to create dozens of these because they'd saturate quite fast. Now, as we saw, you can press a couple of buttons. Facebook can create a lookalike based off your pixel. Um, it updates dynamically, very, very accurate. So extremely good. So yes, there are a lot of advantages now for, um, for small businesses. But on the other side, there are now, you know, 10 times more tools and optimization uh, available in Facebook. So yes, you know, Facebook's made some things easier, some things harder. Um, but definitely give it a go yourself there. Um, I will say as well, obviously a, a little pitch here, but at, at Espresso, our aim has been to simplify this so that you don't have to go and outsource to agencies. The problem with Business Manager is it's powerful, but it's too powerful in some cases. You've got this giant Excel spreadsheet. You've got columns and columns of data and you can filter it in so many ways. You can't see the, the wood from the trees there. And so in Ad Espresso, it's a graphical UI. Our first hire was a graphic designer. And so everything's there, you know, we've got graphs there. We've got, as we saw in our thousand dollar experiment there, you can have two lines, blue versus red. You can instantly see what's working for you. So before you outsource to an agency, because you've got those powerful targeting options that are so easy to create, create those yourselves and then use a tool like Ad Espresso to go and simplify your advertising there. Cool, I think we've got time for one more question. Perfect. Uh, Ruben asks uh, a topic that was coming up recently in Ad Espresso, actually. Uh, he says, that under the targeting area, there's a checkbox to expand your interests. Do you recommend using that or making your own audience in Business Manager? Aha, so this is going to be the topic for our, our June webinar, our scaling webinar there. Um, I ran another $1,000 experiment on this. Um, so this experiment, if you are a Ad Espresso customer, it's actually available now, as far as I know, in the university tab of your Ad Espresso account. That's where all your educational resources are for free. We'll be publishing this on our blog site on um, adespresso.com forward slash blog soon, probably about three or four weeks. So have a look from that. But the take home message there uh, to give you a little sneak peek is that it wasn't that it worked, it, you know, always use it or don't always use it. Um, 
just for aiming for that audience of around about one million people. So if you were using one or two laser focused interests and you've got that audience of like 10,000, then use audience expansion and make it larger. If we're using interests which are larger and we've already got that one, two million, then what I found is when we activate audience expansion, it's just diluting the affinity there and not going to be so good. So that would be my tip there is it's not you just look at that audience size and then decide whether to activate it. So I'm sorry we can quite get to everybody's questions there today, but say if you've got any more, then just um, you can tweet us at, at Espresso or drop me an email. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us today and hopefully we'll see you on our next webinar. Hello, darling. Thank you for ding ding. <laughs>